what I'm thinking. I know that my hair is big and curly and that it isn't usually down in videos, but it's not trying to be up right now and I'm really sick of fighting with it and I have a limited amount of time to film this video, so we're just all gonna have to deal with it and move on. So a couple weeks ago I was at VidCon, which was an absolutely amazing time and I'm so glad that I got to meet so many of you, but I figured that for those of you that didn't get to go to VidCon, the last thing you need in your sub box is another video talking about how great VidCon was. So instead, I'm going to regale you all with the tale of the number one lesson that I learned in LA, which is that my body is in fact polluted. Now I doubt that it'll come as a surprise to any of you that I'm not exactly a pinnacle of health. I mean, I eat a lot of healthy food, but I also eat a lot of junk food because it's delicious. I mean, for example, I'm the girl that literally almost missed her flight because she really wanted a buffalo chicken sandwich while she was in the airport and then was rewarded by karma with the guy next to me getting diarrhea halfway through the flight, so... So for the first time in my long and storied history of airplane travel, I was seated in an exit row. And for those of you that don't know, whenever you're seated in the exit row of an airplane, you have to take your earphones out of your ears and give the stewardess verbal confirmation that you're willing and able to perform whatever duties it would be that you'd have to perform if the plane crashed. Which means that the usual tactic of avoiding a chatty neighbor by having earphones in is completely useless because they have that golden opportunity to cut in for a conversation before you can get your earphones back in your ears and avoid them. And the middle-aged man who was sitting next to me on this flight turned to me during this time and he said, so do you have to pee? Now I've heard a lot of really weird conversation starters in my life, but this one was probably somewhere close to the top of the list, so I sat there in shock for a couple of seconds before I realized that the dude was looking like really pointedly at the coffee that I had sitting on my tray table. It's worth noting that this same cup of coffee I spilled on myself not once but twice before I got in this plane, which was probably some sort of sign that I should have ditched it and avoided this whole thing, but I didn't. Now after a short explanation about how I in fact did have to pee, but just wasn't brave enough to try the teeny tiny airplane bathrooms, the guy tells me that I don't need caffeine to stay awake, I can just have blue algae. So I spent a second sitting in the seat wondering how exactly one would go about munching on blue algae and where one would find it. The guy tells me that he works for a corporation, in fact I think he owns the corporation, that sells like minerals and supplements and vitamins and all of these kinds of things, and so he spends the entire flight telling me about how blue algae will keep me awake and golden seal will do something for my asthma and and niacin promotes circulation and all of these kinds of things and some of it sounds legit. I mean the guy clearly knew what he was talking about. He had some kind of like advanced degree in microbiology or something like that. But he was also telling me about how 81% of the world population has an intolerance to gluten and that's why everybody has cancer and about how he didn't need antibiotics because he had like this weird nutritional thing. And then he told me that the healthy food that I do eat probably has weed killer and pesticides and all kinds of toxins in it that could get into my body and kill me. So when the hour, hour and a half that it takes for this plane to land, I am sitting there acutely aware of every cancerous toxin, poison, artery clogging globule in my body. So as I'm trying to fight down the nervousness of meeting my friend's roommate for the first time who is picking me up at the airport, I'm also trying to shake off the feeling that my body is going to shrivel up and die at any possible second. Unfortunately, whenever I get in the car with my friend's roommate, she's on the phone with her boyfriend who is at Denny's, which is where we're apparently going to be having lunch. And she looks at me and she asks what I want, that way the boyfriend friend couldn't order it for me and because social anxiety I can't think of anything that's on the Denny's menu so I'm just like okay what does everywhere have? Lindsay think what does every restaurant have? So what bursts out of my mouth is burger and fries I mean hopefully not quite that abruptly but that's how it felt. And then three minutes later I found out exactly how wrong of an answer that probably was because this girl is super fit and she has a quote fitness cult where she works out and she has all these people that buy like meal shake supplement -y kind of things from her and she was invited to do the Nike challenge, which only like 40 people do. When we sit down at the restaurant, the roommate has pancakes with chopped up bananas on top waiting for her, and the boyfriend is halfway through his salad, and I'm just sitting there thinking, and I ordered a burger and fries, and they're gonna look at me with their judgy eyes of judgment, and I'm just feeling even more polluted than I was to begin with. Which means that in the 10 minutes or so that it took my food to actually get to me, I'm so nervous that I just start shoveling it into my mouth. I'm just anxious to make it go away. So I'm just eating and inhaling and I don't even think I'm taking time to breathe. And I must have been making some sort of a semi-spectacle because eventually the roommate and the boyfriend look at me and they say, we're not in a hurry. So I look down at the six bites that I have left of my plate with my mouth full, probably to chipmunk proportions, and I just say, Oh. 
I thought we were. And then for the rest of the day, that food just sank in my stomach like a stone, reminding me of all the things that I shouldn't have eaten. And the final leg of this journey occurred two days later, after the first day of VidCon. Now, my friend and I had gotten up at about 3.45 in the morning, and we had, like, gas station food to get us through the day. So at this point, it's 8 o'clock at night, and we are starving. We can eat everything at this point. The first restaurant that we come to is called Morton Steakhouse, which looks like a super classy building. So we decide that we probably can't go in there until we're walking past the parking lot, and it has a big sign that says $6 chicken strip basket. And so we're like, $6 chicken strip basket? That can't be too classy, right? I mean, that's like the same as a steak and shake. And we were so sick and hungry that it didn't really occur to us as we walked past the valet that that was probably a sign that we shouldn't go in. So she opens the door to this restaurant which contains like people in business suits and crystal and like the tinkling sound of classy dining. And so I grab her by her nerdy t-shirt, I pull her back and I say, Kim, we can't go in there. So we truck onward until we find this barbecue place and we assume that there's not really such thing as a super classy barbecue joint. So we go in and there are other people with like VidCon apparel on. So we decide that it's safe. We decide to split this platter thing that has like calamari and buffalo wings and potato skins or something like that. And then I was going to get a side of vegetables so I didn't feel so grossly unhealthy and she was going to get mashed potatoes or something like that. But when our waitress comes up to us and asks for our order, she cuts Kim off after she starts talking about the platter and she says, oh, that's a lot of food. And she walks away. And Kim and I sit there in shock for a couple seconds thinking, is this real life? Did, did that just occur? Did she basically just call us fat and walk away? You can't do that. But it's also hilarious. So we sit there cracking up and we try to taper it down whenever the waitress brings us our drinks and she says, well, I'd love to take more of your money, but it really just is a lot of food. And then she walks away again. So at this point, we're sitting there wondering what is real in our lives. But whenever the waitress brings us our food, there's an extra plate of potato skin. So I thought that that was her way of apologizing. Turns out she just got the order wrong and so we were charged for it, but it wasn't worth the fight. But that occurred and since that was the only meal that we didn't eat at a gas station in five days, it really was a big deal because it was delicious. So question of the day, have any of you ever encountered anything like this where you just felt really unhealthy or like a toxin? Let me know in the comments. Or if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can leave those in the comments too or send them to me on Twitter. Until next time.